I, I have a question. Uh, one of the yeah. things that we're kind of struggling with now is like, for example, I'm spending a lot of time on the floor, but I also have new coaches to manage. And we're not at a point where I can like step back as yeah. much as I need to or spend time with the coaches. So uh, yeah. it, given like minimal time in a week, um, what, what are the most effective things? And this may seem a little abstract. Like what are the most effective things I can be doing to help coaches improve their themselves and develop? This is, okay. So this is, this is actually a really good question. So what do you, what's the outcome? What do you need them to be able to do? Like, do you want them to coach exercises better or what do you want them to do? Now, I want them to be confident, like no one else in the building, them by themselves, confidently delivering the exercises and holding member, members accountable. Okay. So the first piece I think would be easier, right? Um, as far as how to coach an exercise, literally what I would do if possible, whether it's an iPhone or whatever the case may be, start documenting how you do stuff, right? So like back in the day, it was like with the E-Myth, it's like write down all your procedures, right? right? So it's like, okay, I'm going to hand write or whatever, document this. But it's like that always changes, right? And who really wants to go look at this piece of paper? So yes. uh, here's a book you should pick up. It's called Clockwork by Mike Michael Lowitz. And it's about like growing your business and scaling. Um, and it's about procedures. And so what you should do is anytime you coach a new exercise or coach an exercise to a new client, have your coach or assistant or intern, whoever it is, have them record you doing it. Okay. And start building a database. Okay. So it's like, Hey, here's me teaching a plate squat. Here's me teaching a push up, and then just create folders, whether it's on your computer, Dropbox, wherever you want to have it and just have squats, hinges, single leg, pushing variations, whatever, however you want to break it up and then just start uploading them in there. Right. So now so you're, you're going to, you're going to coach the exercise anyways. Right. So now literally there's no time from you being off the floor. It's like, Hey, you're coaching this. Hey, let's record this real quick. And then they upload it. And hopefully within a month or two, you could have 80 to 90% of your exercises covered. And then the real coaching for you is going to be the second part of that is harder. Owning a room, being comfortable, that sort of thing. That's where you're probably going to have to let them coach. And this is again, what Ruth and I were talking about either just as you guys came on or just before, but you got to give them the floor. You got to give them the floor. You got to let them coach. You need to be like back in a corner, hanging out or talking to, preferably not talking to another client, but like just watching them and yeah. then giving them constructive feedback on what they're doing well, what they need to improve upon. And that's, that's the only way they're gonna get better at that piece, right? Like that just takes reps and it takes, it takes airspace for lack of a better term, right? Like we as coaches or owners of businesses, we take up a lot of the room because we are who we are. So yes. we have to kind of constrict ourselves so that they can expand and they can grow into their own kind of shoes as a coach. And right. so that's something that I think is really important. At some point you have to kind of just back off and let them get more comfortable, find their own personality, you know, kind of let their own personality shine and then kind of just see how things go from there. Really so, good point. Oh, sorry. That, that was a really good point is that, you know, Mike goes in, he can dominate the room just if for no other reason, because he owns the joint. Yeah. And, you know, you got to, you got to back off a little bit and give those guys a chance to dominate the room also. Yeah. And I'll be honest, the first time you do that, it's harder than you think. Yeah. yeah. It's really hard. Cause like you see like an interaction or you see an exercise and you're like, Ooh, oh, I want to fix that. You can't do that. <laughs> Another thing too, right? Like just when it comes to uh, like cueing an exercise, like one thing that we always try and be cognizant of is not coaching over each other yeah. because I don't know what somebody else is working on, right? So maybe I come over and I give them a cue and it's, it's the right cue and it gets what I want out of it, but the other coach was working on something else. Okay, so like that's where too, like it's harder than you think but yeah. you have to give them airspace and maybe it's 20, 30 minutes. Maybe it's an hour. I don't know, but like, let them try and figure out their own shtick, their own kind of appeal. And if you do that and then afterwards, then you do like a debrief and you say, Hey, look, I loved how you did this, this and this. 
maybe ask them some probing questions like, hey, what were you working on here? And I think that's important too, is like trying to understand like, what is their thought process? Like that's something that always fascinates me. Like sometimes uh, like when Bill's doing an assessment or when he's coaching something or even one of our coaches, I'll just be like, hey, why did you give that cue? Or what are you trying to get out of that? And, you know, I, before I'm trying to predict, you know, like why are they doing that? But then I want to hear their answer. And I want to get an understanding of their thought process because we all think differently too, right? Yeah. Like in a perfect world as a staff, we're all kind of thinking generally in the same direction. But, you know, not everybody's going to think exactly like you do. Yeah. And I think one of the things that I love about Bill is sometimes, or in a lot of cases, we kind of end up at the same point, but we have vastly different viewpoints on how we got to the same conclusion. So. Right. Uh, in terms of giving them the floor. Yeah. Uh, now, you guys have an internship process. So a couple, first couple of weeks, they've been getting client interactions to the clients are getting very, very comfortable with them. Yep. Um, how do you help? Because eventually I have to step away and I've developed deep relationships with all of our, our local members and someone else is going to step on the floor and, and start coaching them. How do you best set them up for success in that situation? And I, I think there's two parts, right? It's, it's, it's repetitions, right? Like just getting them, me and Ruth talked about this. It, you're never comfortable, right? You're never a hundred percent like ready. It's like getting married or having a kid or something like you're never a hundred percent ready to be on the floor and be the guy, but it's being thrust into that situation. But I would say the other piece of that too, is just being as comfortable as you can that you have prepared yourself with the knowledge, right? With the X's and O's that you're comfortable with the clients on hand, because yeah. I mean, that's a big part of it too. Like I've been doing this a long time. There's still certain clients that they just kind of throw you off guard. <laughs> Their personality or yeah. just the vibe, you know, the energy they're putting off. So it's like, yeah. put them in a situation where hopefully it's a client they know, somebody that's not like overly tasked uh, or, or not, not overly like complicated with regards to movement and that sort of yeah. thing. Like, I think e like good wins, easy wins up front is huge to build some confidence, right? It's like with a kid, my daughter's eight. She's doing like addition and subtraction. If I gave her algebra, she wouldn't be successful. Yeah. You build them up to it. So same thing. Try and give them some easy wins up front and then progressively expose them to more challenging situations or clients. Yeah. 